What we're seeing in the Bitcoin ETFs as a collective group is unprecedented. After many years of drama and time in and out of courts, the long-awaited Bitcoin ETF finally got approved early January this year. Now, the anticipation for the approval caused the price to go from a 22000 to a new all-time high in Bitcoin, almost reaching a $74,000 per Bitcoin. And the question is, who are the buyers? Are the buyers the people who are really hedge funds and long-term investors? Or are the buyers a speculator? And why is that important? The importance is, if the buyers are the long-term investors, then the growth in price from 22000 to almost 74000 may be justifiable. But if the buyers are just traders who are trading on other platforms and now using ETF as a trading instrument, that growth may not be sustainable. In today's video, we're going to be trying to answer the question, who are those buyers? And I'm going to try to answer that question, not just with my view, but the view of two other experts, two experts that happens to have opposing views. One of them is Jim Bianco and the other one is Eric Balkunas. And towards the end, I want to say to which one of those experts I agree with. Jim Bianco's perspective is that the primary buyers of those Bitcoin ETFs are not strong hands. He defined them to be weak hands, people who have a certain amount of profit as their target. And once that target is achieved, they will sell those Bitcoin ETFs. He talks about sophisticated money such as hedge funds, wealth managers, and asset managers. He says that those guys are not Bitcoiners. They are not in for the technology. They are in for the profit. And once that profit is achieved, those buyers, those short-term buyers, will sell those Bitcoin ETFs causing the price to drop. And one thing that I really admire about Jim Bianco is his level of knowledge on the history of markets and the history of economics. And you can see here that he's using historical events as a way to back up his point of view and his perspective on the Bitcoin ETF. Look at this footage. Whenever I see a big rush of money into ETFs, like we did in XIV, which was the short volatility funds, like we did in USO, and I'm picking those for a particular reason, the United States oil fund, um, like we saw last year, about this time last year, with all of the Chinese funds, it is typically what I would refer to as a, a weak-handed player. The reason I picked those two examples, um, United States oil fund used to buy front-end futures contracts, and there was kind of a, a design flaw in it. And when we wound up in April of 2020, when they had to roll the contract, they produced a minus $40 on the front end of, of crude oil futures. We all probably remember that and didn't understand why that happened. XIV, which was the short fund. Eric, you t tweeted that out the other day. It was going straight up, straight up, straight up and lost 95% of its money in like one minute. And as you can see, Jim Bianco is concerned about the behavior of those investors. After all, the behaviors of those investors calls for a rapid inflow pushing the price up. But the behavior also works on the opposite way causing rapid outflows which will push the price further down. And that will increase the volatility of Bitcoin instead of stabilizing the price. By the way, if the language of this video sounds like jargon to you, I have a course on crypto basics. Link for that on the description below. And to emphasize his point, Jim Bianco used a hypothetical scenario where many trades could push the price significantly higher in one single day. However, we do not have that hypothetical scenario being played, but we have the opposing scenario. After all, when Iran attacked Israel, we could see how the price of Bitcoin went from 72000 to 62000 in just one single day. Now, as we mentioned to you guys, Eric's view is the opposing view of Jim Bianco. You have a base of like serious investor adult assets. The more you look for stuff that's completely different, you, you have a, in my opinion, a hot sauce bucket. Now, that could mean a Robinhood account. It could mean trading stocks. It could mean options. It could mean ARC. It could mean thematic ETFs. To me, Bitcoin fits perfectly there. So I see these retail investors, especially given the size of the trades, as putting in like 1% of their portfolio or less. Now, the reason that matters is that my assumption, and I think I'm right, most of these people probably have a base 401k type, you know, where their serious money is. Therefore, this they will have more tolerance when there's a sell-off. Eric is focused on the wider demographic of investors. He's suggesting that there is a group of investors that are very savvy, very well educated, and they're simply allocating a small amount of their investment into Bitcoin ETFs as a way to diversify their investments for the long term, meaning that those investors are very likely to hold those ETF even when the price goes up, maybe even purchase more as the price drops, because after all, on Eric's view, those guys are very savvy and properly educated on what is Bitcoin and what risk they're taking. Now, if you're enjoying this content and getting value from this video, there's a way in which you can help us continue bringing videos to you guys, and that is 
liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, Eric's argument is very convincing. However, there is one issue, and the issue is that Jim Bianco used as evidence for his claim the amount of transactions of ETF that have occurred in one single day. Tuesday, we had 709,000 trades. The TPS, the transactions per second on the Bitcoin blockchain, couldn't handle it. It's, it doesn't move that fast. After all, the Bitcoin blockchain only allows for seven transactions per second. And Jim Bianco claims that there were many more than seven transactions per second on the ETF, amounting to 70,000 transactions in a 24-hour period. Now, Jim's argument is that those sophisticated investors are not going to be causing so many transactions in one single day. So, as you could see, those two have very opposing opinion. And the question is, which one do I believe to be right? And I believe they are both right. But there's a little bit more to that answer. I believe Eric is right. There is a small amount of investors that they may be allocating Bitcoin TF as a way to diversify their portfolio and they are not likely to sell as a quick trader. However, I believe Eric is overestimating the amount of those traders that are actually buying those ETFs. After all, it's much easier to buy an ETF today than once in the past. Today, you can go and get an account on a website without being an accredited investor. I believe Jim Bianco is more right. I believe when you see 70,000 transactions in one single day, that suggests that the vast majority of the investors are not strong hands who are buying Bitcoin to hold for the long term. Another thing that I think Jim Bianco brought into this conversation, which most people are not paying attention to, is the fact that you cannot withdraw in kind, meaning you're never going to be able to withdraw Bitcoin for ETF, which proposes another problem. Let's say the price is dropping and people want to get out of the ETF. They are selling the ETF on a platform digitally. However, BlackRock is not holding the Bitcoin. It could be that by the time BlackRock decides to sell the Bitcoin on Coinbase, the price is even lower. And the question that Jim Bianco raises is, who is going to take that loss? And I believe that to be a very significant question. And if you want to find out more about how is it that the person who buys the Bitcoin TF is never going to be able to withdraw their Bitcoin, we have made a video explaining precisely that. Link for that on the description below. We also going to leave below the link for the entire discussion between Jim and Eric. And I suggest you to really watch that entire discussion so you can be better informed about Bitcoin TF and better informed to make your investment. And with this, I wrap up this video. Now, do not forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and above it all, share this video with someone else who may benefit from this. See you guys in the next video.